Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BSV TV. I'm your host, Sir Toshi, and on this show, we'll be defending the one and only truly genuine Bitcoin. The Bitcoin that Satoshi Nakamoto designed in his white paper as a peer to peer electronic cash system for the world. Let's get the disclaimers out of the way. So all the statements that you hear on this show are opinion and must only ever be taken as opinion. They are never to be taken as any form of advice, family, financial, sexual or otherwise. And on that note, let's sit back, relax, have some fun and enjoy the show. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and set your own fee on Streamanity. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I wasn't asked why I'm convinced. Craig is Satoshi. Um, I posted on, on Reddit, he signed in my presence uh, the private, using the private key from block one, block number one, the very first mined Bitcoin block uh, on a computer that I'm convinced had not been tampered with, on software I'm convinced that had not been tampered with, a message of my choosing. At Enchain, we've just funded a number of universities doing, so far, a test up to one gigabyte because it validates what we've already done independently. We've tested up to 380 gigabyte blocks. We have tested 1 million transactions a second and transaction sizes up to 20 megabytes. Super complex scripts, basically ones that can run operating systems. That's basically all of global commerce times about 50. On top of that, we can have complex scripts. On top of that, we can scale each of those transactions 1000 times, which effectively means about a billion transactions per second, which means we can then have all derivatives, all complex trades. That means high frequency trading. It means everything that happens globally. Is the market that effectively BSV is going for, is that global e-commerce, which is currently valued at $29 trillion? No, that's just more. Buy and sell Bitcoin instantly at bsvgravity.com. And you can now book and pay for your winter holiday at skibsv.com. Good afternoon, everybody. It looks like we are live at five and we are on fire. Just checking all the uh, stats here. Yeah, recording live frames per second. CPU looks like we are all good. Woo! What a day. You cannot escape all these shit coiners celebrating. Like, oh, oh my God, I mean, this is <laughs> this is one of the reasons why stupid people are dangerous. Because they don't understand what they're doing. And at the same time, not understanding what they're doing, thinking they know what they're doing, and then egging everybody else on. I mean, it's really ridiculous. So I'm going to drop probably a bombshell at the beginning of all of my shows just to just so that anybody new who listens in will well with any amount of intelligence whatsoever will understand what we're looking at here so bitcoin <coughs> is cash and cash is the most liquid form of money and in order to be money it cannot be controlled so how do you pro or how do you prevent something from being controlled when it has a centralized starting point it's this dilution of the centralized starting point that is the paradox that Satoshi Nakamoto solved with Bitcoin. So what you can do is if you have a centralized starting point, which discredits the network, you can then dilute that network over time, provided the starting point is as neutral as possible and has as much credibility as possible. Now, Satoshi Nakamoto solved this by providing a two month period between the release of the white paper and the start of the network where the white paper was released and it had all the information in it that anyone and everyone needed in order to start the network themselves but because he had released the white paper it was up to him in order to provide a reasonable amount of time for anyone else to start it so that's what he did. He released the paper on the 31st of October because it's Halloween and it was an added distraction. The two busiest years of the uh, the two busiest months of the year are the festive period between well, November and December. And then he started the network on December the 3rd. So that was two months, which is usually what's considered a reasonable amount of time in a number of circumstances within the law, plus an extra four days. 
so 31st of October, and in January the 3rd. That's two months, four days. Right, reasonable amount of time provided to give it credibility. Now let's start the network. And then let's look at the, who the network was started by. It was started by Satoshi Nakamoto. Now Satoshi Nakamoto is a Japanese name, but the white paper was written and in, in English and released to the Western world uh, on a cryptographic mailing list to extremely competent people. It wasn't just simply mailed out to, uh, you know, the local grocery store and just simply left there so that nobody would see it. It was mailed to a cryptographic mailing list so that people who saw it would actually understand it, which is what gave it that credible amount of time. However, the start of the network is divided into two parts. You have one, the author, and secondly, the paper itself. So you've got the author that's Japanese and the paper that's English. So where's the centralized point there? Is it an English person that's written this in English and released it to a whole load of English people? No, it's a Japanese person that is over the other side of the world releasing his paper to uh, the Western world with people who actually understand the technology. And being a Jap or so giving himself a Japanese pseudonym, gave him the author as much credibility as possible, which was then obviously, you know, that credibility was given to his work. Now, Japan being highly developed, technologically advanced and politically neutral, people didn't really question his expertise. Now, also being in Japan, it being like an island nation, there is a, a barrier to entry in terms of the language. There is also a, a population size, which makes him hard to track down. Um, <laughs> so it was the perfect way to just step away from the network. So now we've got that neutral starting point. You're now looking at the neutral growth of the network. Now you have to you have to say to yourself, right, how long is a long enough period of time for this network to grow like neutrally and dilute this central point of authority? That's what the timing was all about. Now Satoshi Nakamoto clearly chose 11 years because he asked for the keys to the Tulip Trust to be returned to him on the 1st of January 2020 this year. That is the period of decentralization, dilution and distribution, neutral growth. Now that is the where the fundamental value in Bitcoin lies, which means it cannot be any other network. Let's take Litecoin for example. We know that Charlie Lee started that. Well, Charlie Lee discredits it himself. That's it. We know that Vitalik Buterin started Ethereum. That alone discredits it himself or discredits it you know, himself. Because if any if someone can start something, it means that also America and China can start the very same thing themselves. If America started it, China will never use it. If China started it, America will never use it. So who is it that started Bitcoin? Well, no one knows, and, the, and whoever it was had uh, had uh, no um, authority, control, or influence over the growth of the network. They just simply started it, and it grew. Everybody got on board. That is what gives Bitcoin credibility. So it cannot be any other shitcoin, because every other shitcoin is as centralized as it was the day it started. This is the issue with <laughs> this is the issue with every point of uh, uh, distributed ledger technology. The centralized starting point. Pre-mine is created by a central authority. They own it, they control it, and that doesn't change. Same with proof of stake. Proof of stake is owned and controlled by those who stake the network. That never changes. And because there is no competition between the stakeholders, it's those stakeholders that themselves that create a group that then control the, that control the network, which centralizes it. It is the same with Hedra Hashgraph, IOTA's Tangle, uh, you know, Delegate Your Proof of Stake and EOS. They have absolutely no credibility whatsoever. So now we know it can only be the Bitcoin network. You then have to look at the chains on the network. So tell you what, let's uh, just so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to send this to myself on my Twitter profile. Oh, yeah. Looking good here. Bring this up. Go to messages. Uh, where's me? There we go. I think I've already sent this. Um, picture to myself somewhere but I uh, will just find it again quickly because I can't be bothered to uh, scroll through all my messages should be quicker this way hold on one sec all files here we go right let's see if we can um, 
you probably know the picture that I'm going to bring up. But again, you know, this is this is for newbies who don't really have a clue what they're uh, doing. Or to be honest with you, even those who call themselves experts. <laughs> there we go. There we are. So this is what we want. Right. So uh, now we know it can only be the uh, the Bitcoin network. What we have to do is consider the forks of the network. So we all know that Bitcoin started at the Genesis block. Then it continued. Then on the 24th of August 2017, a group of developers called Blockstream changed the protocol, segregated the signatures on the network, which gave which and it's the signatures that um, uh, keep uh, hold all developers and users of the network to account. And the moment anybody tampers with that, and they can tamper with it, but when they tamper with it, they crash the value to zero because they centrally control it by doing what they've done, which is what Blockstream did. So they segregated the signatures, prevented the uh, chain from scaling, which sooner or later meant that uh, if there's no new market for miners to compete for, they're just simply going to have to take market share off of each other, which centralizes the network and crashes, crashes its value to zero. Now, so, so this is what's happened to BTC. It cannot go anywhere. Then... Bitcoin just simply continued under a new ticker symbol called BCH, but then Amory and Roger Ver and all those uh, B crash cronies, what they did is they took control of the protocol. They started adding checkpoints in. They started upgrading the protocol every six months, which means that nobody can build on it. And when no one can build on it, it effectively means it's permission based because obviously only those who control it can build on it. They can do whatever they want with it. But it means the token that runs on it is fundamentally worthless, which means eventually it will not be able to economically sustain the network. So that's crashed to zero. So then the Bitcoin protocol just simply carried on under a new ticker, which is BSV. So people ask, what is BSV? It's just Bitcoin, like it's always been from the Genesis block, just simply massively scaled. That's all it is. These other chains have literally no fundamental value. So when you're looking at number go up, you realize it's an utter, it's totally, it's utterly worthless. It is a complete bubble. And you've just got this information that I've just explained here is worth billions, billions of dollars. And these shit coiners with shiver brains literally have not worked this out. Even uh, those who've been in the industry for like <laughs> I know, 10 years, Still haven't figured this out. There is only a very, very small number of people who understand this. Even those who support BSV don't really understand these fundamentals that I've just explained. So that's why I'm probably going to mention it on uh, on each and every show. Because um, obviously in the future, when the shit hits the fan, like quite literally, uh, I expect there to be millions, if not, <laughs> yeah, millions of people, millions and millions asking questions, what the hell went wrong? And then all they got to do is listen to my show and there, there it is explained for them, clear as day. Oh, I get it now. Yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward. But now that's been done and we're all on the same page, let's jump through these figures. This is the crypto forecast, the strength of the system, the health of the network. So we have got Bitcoin with 4% of the hash rate, Bcrash 1%, Corecoin 98.6. So the reason they've got 98.6 is because uh, the price has gone up, which means it's more profitable to mine, which means miners are just simply moving their hash rate over to it. But when they realize that BTC have got no fundamental value when it starts crashing because it can't economically sustain the network, the hash rate will just simply move on to the network that the most people are using which means you have to look at the utility, which is transactions. We'll come to that in just a second. So we've got network nodes, again, same as they ever were. Actually, it's gone up a little bit here on uh, on Bitcoin to 2.4, it's usually around 2.3. So we've got 2.4% uh, of the nodes on uh, Bitcoin, 10.5 on Bcrash, 87.1 on Corecoin. But look at this, Bitcoin with 71.2% of the transactions. So in the future, the hash rate and the network nodes are just simply going to follow the transactions and the block sizes. It's all coming over, including the price. Everything is coming over. Bitcoin is a zero sum game because it is a tool and people just simply use the tool that fulfills the work that's required in the best way. So with it being a medium of exchange, a transactional currency, cash, digital cash, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, you need something that, like a tool, you need, people are just simply going to use the tool that fulfills the trade in the best way. And the medium of exchange is a tool that enables, accelerates, and, uh, or enables, encourage, accelerates, and facilitates 
Um, uh, I've forgotten what I was going to say there. A medium of exchange is a tool that enables, encourages, accelerates, and facilitates trade. God, I can't remember what I normally say. Let me, let me, let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. A medium of exchange is a tool that uh, enables, encourages, accelerates, and facilitates trade. Ugh. <laughs> Memory blank, live on air, never mind. Uh, but anyway, so we've got a Bitcoin with 71.2, uh, B Crash 2.1, uh, Core Coin 28.6. Block size, again, over 50%. That's all we need. 56% for Bitcoin, 3.9 on B Crash, 41% oh, 40.1% on Core Coin. Uh, let's just play spot the biggest block on B Crash. They'll be lucky to get over half a megabyte. Oh no, oh look at that, they've got 898. Uh, they've got another one that's just over half a megabyte. Well done them. 824, 601. Uh, again, they haven't got anything that's uh, over a megabyte. Uh, let's, uh, well, it's funny looking at CoreCoin because they purposely have a one megabyte restriction <laughs> because they don't want people to use it. Yeah, yeah, you don't use money. Money's, uh, money's useless. You don't exchange it for goods or services or trade or anything like that. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Oh, accelerates the facilitation of trade. That's what I would have said. Bitcoin is a tool that enables, encourages, and accelerates the facilitation of trade. Yep, there we go. My mind was a little bit slow there. Uh, wow, look at look at these blocks coming in on Bitcoin. Straight away, Tal has got an 11 megabyte block, an 18 megabyte block, 6 megabyte block, 13 megabyte block. I mean, look at this. This is just, this is great. And this is nothing compared to what the Bitcoin uh, network is actually uh, capable of. It's just big in comparison to these uh, these two scam shit crime coins that are absolutely worthless. <laughs> so um, let's have a just have a quick look at B Crash while we're here. Cause uh, cause lols. <laughs> and we got uh, four thousand six hundred forty-seven blocks. Yeah, Amory's coin and his money along the bottom. Loving his money. It's worthless, mate. <laughs> Uh, the bitch and chain versus Amory's coin proof of work or uh, so, um, network growth. Good grief! And look at this. So the bitch and chain Hathor on there, um, gobbling up those empty blocks so that these uh, shitcoin enterprises don't have a chance to just simply steal the block reward without any work whatsoever. Uh, I do find that highly amusing. Amory's coin. Oh look, Hathor is on there. Ooh! <laughs> oh! Hathor, they are, oh crikey, I mean, that actually makes me laugh, you know, because if you're a shitcoin like uh, um, Bitcoin ABC or uh, Bcrash ABC, you do not want a miner like Hathor on your network stealing your empty blocks. No, you don't. I mean, let's have a look. I mean, it's creeping in. I mean, look at that. Hathor, 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 Hathor. Ooh. Oh, dear, oh dear, that's going to... That hash rate, I bet that hash, the hash rate of Hathor is going to probably uh, maybe accelerate on there because it's anything that's got empty blocks, Hathor would just simply eat and gobble up. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, look at what he's look at what he's doing on uh, on the bitching chain. Look at this, Hathor, 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 Hathor. This is hilarious, Hathor, Hathor, Hathor. Look, oh dear, Abs that's just hilarious. That's absolutely hilarious. <clears throat> And like I said, I, I think I have an idea as to who's behind Hathor. <laughs> because it takes some serious, deep technological know-how and understanding to be able to develop a miner that can just simply chomp up those empty blocks. Like, brilliant. I mean, you've really got to know what you're doing uh, to, uh, to create something like that. <laughs> Okay, and uh, back to the uh, back to these graphs. Then let's see. This this is the Bitcoin hash rate by network. Oh, uh, Bitcoin hash rate. Bit, you know, again, hash rate follows price. Price follows value, which will come very soon because these other shit coins have no value, which is why they're called shit coins. Proof of work by network again. Cool coin and B crash will just simply halt one day, and literally they will just stop. You know, so all these shit coiners who are celebrating the price at the moment, like literally just one day rug pull. The whole lot. It is going to be devastating. Um, but that's, that's what's going to happen. Uh, proof of work by network. This is, um, yeah, B crash versus Bitcoin. Uh, transaction fees. Look at this. Look at this. It is now 31,000 times cheaper to transact on Bitcoin 
than CoreCoin because CoreCoin is an absolute piece of shit and now there's more and more people on the network and the price is going up. You know, the fees are just going to skyrocket as well. I mean, it's, well, it's absolutely insane. You know what we might do while we're here? Yeah, why not? We'll, have, we'll actually just have a look at uh, Joho's uh, meme pool. Uh, here we got a BTC default meme pool. So look at that. I mean, this, these are all the unconfirmed transaction transactions building. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yeah, they're going up. And uh, up is the only way they can go. But again, shit corner, shit for brains. They're just like, oh yeah, number go up. Well, mate, you know, if you want the number to go up in price, then you're also going to have to deal with transaction times going up and transaction transaction prices. Oh dear, because it's an absolute piece of shit. That's why they call them shit coins. That's why BTC is a shit coin. Because it's just utter shit. It does nothing. Apart from being a Ponzi scheme, which, uh, you know, we all know is illegal. So I don't know why anybody celebrates that. Absolutely nuts, but shit coin is shit for brains, unfortunately. Uh, so it's currently a 10.8 more profitable to mine or cool coin, obviously because because uh, number go up. Okay, daily average Bitcoin block sizes by network again. Bitcoin winning. Uh, transactions by network, yeah. Bitcoin smashing it. Transactions per block, Bitcoin smashing it. Fees USD, Bitcoin smashing it. Fees Satoshi's, Bitcoin smashing it. Block world ratio again. That will come with time, with uh, as uh, price will follow value. And uh, yeah, that's not going to take long. I got blockchain growth by network again, just laughing at the bitching chain here or B crash chain. Um, and again, you know, uh, B crash and cool corn would just simply disappear. Uh, global hash rate seven days, Huobi macking it hard, really wanting some pooling up there this week. Ample down in fourth, Binance in fifth, two biggest shitcoin enterprises, um, relegating BTC.com down in sixth. Global hash rate, 24 hours. Again, this would probably look similar to CoreCoin. Um, F2 pool, Binance wanting it today. Um, QOB pool in Apple. Let's see if that is similar to... Uh, oh, yeah, pretty much the same, apart from poolings pushed uh, QOB down to fourth. Uh, but then, yeah, I mean, look at that. Almost identical. Almost identical. So, yeah, don't need to have a look at that one. Uh, B crash again, very similar to the, uh, the B crash chain that we just looked at. Hathor chomping away. Oh, look at this. Look at this. All right, this is interesting. Okay, so uh, my guess is that Huobi has taken hash rate off of Bitcoin. They've pretty put that onto uh, CoreCoin. Um, so Tal has taken advantage of that. Now with 15% of that. Uh, Norpool mean pool has now been given a chance by Huobi. Um, Hathor is still on there chomping at those empty blocks. And we've got F2 pool taking a chunk out of it this time. So we've got F2 pool, btc.com. Is pooling on there? Pooling gesturing? No, uh, I can't quite see it. All right, but uh, yeah, keep your eyes uh, keep your eyes peeled on that, folks. Right, let's have a uh, quick look at the blockchain live. Here we go. So uh, again, for any newbies that don't know what they're looking at, the figure on the top right hand corner tells you the number of transactions per second that are being recognized by the nodes on the network. It's currently four, uh, well, about right, four transactions a second. And again, I have seen this as high as 3,000. 3,000 and over. It can do way more than that. Um, so this metric that we see along the bottom here that's now moving, uh, these are the transactions being recognized by the nodes on the network. Below that are um, uh, the names of the organizations who are generating those transactions. You've got the transaction ID, the input, output, the type, and the and the op return details. Below that, we've got the mean pool. So once the transactions are picked up by the nodes on the network, they're thrown into the mean pool. Uh, and at the moment, we can see there is currently 59,700 transactions in that. Once these transactions are in the mean pool, they are then competed for by the miners who pro who look to compete to process the transactions, put them in a block, and insert them into the blockchain when they are rewarded with a block reward. Um, and obviously, uh, at, the, at the moment, the whole idea of making um, Bitcoin as valuable as possible is to encourage as much use as possible. So unlike BTC, who don't want any use because they don't understand what Bitcoin does, Bitcoin has a block reward halving every 210,000 blocks. Now, shit coiners with shit for brains, which are these BTCs, think scarcity make number go up. Whereas that's not the case. 
The whole point of Bitcoin is that it is a race against time in order to get the in order to get enough transactions on chain to substitute the block reward halving. Because if the block rewards was just simply like, infinite, it just went on and on and on, there would be an infinite supply, which would mean a fundamental value of zero. The supply has to be fixed and it cannot just simply be given out because then you've got like, you know, an infinite supply, um, you know, like an infinite supply of water. Yeah, yeah, and then you, you have to, well, you can bottle water and people pay for the privilege of uh, having it uh, to hand, but that's not the same with Bitcoin because it's digital. Um, so Bitcoin is infinite, infinitely divisible, which is what gives it its price and a sense of urgency. Uh, down the bottom in the highlighted rectangular box, we have the, the hash rate, the block height, mined by who, size, the time and date the block was uh, put on the blockchain, the transaction count and the total fee. So if we were to take this block here, 18.55, we can see the fees go up to $15.46. But that's because there is only 73,000 transactions in there. In the future, there will be millions, millions, millions and billions of transactions in each block. Uh, and the fees will, of course, uh, allow the those who economically sustain the network to continue maintaining it forever. Whereas if there aren't enough transactions on it and the block reward just simply gets cut in half, if number doesn't go up and it won't go up because there's, no, there's nothing attracting people to it because it doesn't do anything, it's just simply a Ponzi scheme. Once the market crashes, that's it. There's no reason for anybody to go in because it is useless. This is why the value of Bitcoin comes from its utility. It is nothing to do with scarcity, make number go up. Honestly, I just can't believe that all these so-called intelligent people think that. It's just so ridiculous. But um, there we go. That For any logical people with any intelligence whatsoever, I've just explained Bitcoin to you. <laughs> All right, let's have a quick look at some of these charts. Then on BitInfo charts, this is great. Uh, these are all the uh, metrics here that we're looking at. But, I mean, there's the rich list up here with, uh, you know, all the wallets in and stuff like that. So let's have a quick look at uh, CoreCoin while we're here. See if the values have changed. Um, I wonder if... Uh, so there's currently, uh, how many million is this? Is this uh, 16 million, 488 and 55 uh, wallets with a 0 0.001 um, BTC in them? Huh. Oh, I wonder if this would have changed because of the whales. There is only one wallet address registered here. Oh my goodness me. So there's only one wallet with between... 100 and 1 million BTC in it. I wonder if that's, I, I, my guess is that that would be either an early miner or a Satoshi wallet, something like that. But look at that, only one. And the value of that one is, oh, in one wallet, there is three, this is in dollars, three billion, 342 million, $422,580 USDC. $3 billion in one wallet. <laughs> nice. Unfortunately, that's not mine. I can confirm. <laughs> so there are, um, oh my goodness me, there are only uh, 104 wallets with between uh, 10,000 and 100,000 um, BTC in it. And uh, they total 53, whoa, that's 56 billion. 56 billion, 380 million, 437,601 USD. Oh my goodness me. So anyway, but we know they're, but we know that's absolutely full of crap anyway. So I'm actually more into the uh, the genuine Bitcoin wallet address. Let's see the comparison. Oh, look, there are nine wallet addresses with between 100,000 and a million uh, Bitcoin in it. Uh, 154 wallets with between uh, 10,000 and 100,000 and uh, 1,733. But... Uh, if you ask me, I think, you know, I just don't think it's good practice to be storing uh, such a huge amount of, of Bitcoin in a, in a single wallet, unless it's like, you know, cold storage wallet somewhere, <clears throat> you know, offline, off the grid, basically. 
Uh, but anyway, so we've got 900, 154,1733. Shall we look at this? Again. So again, that would have been 154, but that's 104. So there's an extra 50 wallets in BSV. Again, if you ask me, and so on CoolCoin, there's a 2,184. Um, in comparison to uh, BSV, it's got 1,733. So if you ask me, I would say that these, um, yeah, there are whales moving, moving their core coin uh, into uh, into Bitcoin. If you ask me, that's what I think that says. Interesting. Uh, so let's have a look at some of these uh, info charts uh, again. So these the blue tabs on the left hand side. What we'll do is we'll look at um, average transactions per hour. Yep. Then we we'll go to log. And then we'll do uh, three years since, um, oh, I need to add, oh, uh, what should we add? Should we add Ethereum in there? There we go. This is what you want to look at. So if you're an investor, you're asking what uh, what the green one is. That's Bitcoin, the genuine Bitcoin. So it's done all this in three years. It's overtaken B Crash that had an 18-month head start. It's overtaken uh, CoreCoin that's got over 10 years head start, you know. Um, and this is the genuine Bitcoin. Right, absolutely fantastic. Look at that. It's almost, oh, it is almost topping Ethereum. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, Bitcoin, uh, 1.07 million transactions. Ethereum, 1.26. Chomping at the bit. Like, it's really not going to take much. It's really not going to take much. You know, like... Uh, Great stuff, right? Now let's get to uh, the bit that all the shitcoiners love, which is the shitcoin market. Here we go. This is the uh, the big news in a moment. Obviously, Corecoin breaking through this uh, twenty three thousand five hundred uh, or twenty three thousand five hundred dollar barrier. But again, you know, I mean, it's just, well, I mean, it needs to be celebrated anyway because all all this market cap, not just simply that of Corecoin. Which is, looks like it's sure, like maybe eighty percent of the overall market, uh, or seventy-five percent, something like that. Yeah, it looks seventy-five percent of it. Uh, all of it is coming into Bitcoin. The whole lot, because all of these currencies, as I say, have centralized starting points, which makes them fundamentally absolutely worthless. The only ones that don't are those on the Bitcoin network. And then on the Bitcoin network, you just simply find, have to find out which projects are centralized, which ones have been tampered with and changed. Well. The ones that have been tampered with and changed are CoreCoin and Bcrash, which means they're out of the running. So there is only Bitcoin left, which is uh, which has got the ticker symbol BSV. And very few people in the world know this. Like literally very few people in the world. So yeah, there we go. So uh, now that's uh, been a quick done, or oh, well, I've had a rundown of the figures. Uh, we are just simply going to have a, have a laugh, have a lol at these... Uh, uh, these videos here from these shit coiners. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the show, people. And uh, as ever, be aware, take care, stay safe out there. Same time tomorrow. Catch you later. Buy BSV.live, the best place to buy Bitcoin SV online. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and watch the full episode on Streamanity for just 20 cents. Go to www.satoshi.tv. See the link in the description below. Bitcoin, one world, one chain. Yeah! Yeah!